Welcome to part 3 of Source Engine Modding. I am Fanril and today you will see how compiling a model works. What you need is Crowbar. This tool is developed by Zach Makar and allows you to decompile and compile models. Also required is Notepad++. This text editor also has custom language packs that make editing QC files easier. Not necessary, but very useful, is HLMV, that is short for Half-Life Model Viewer. It can be obtained by downloading the game-specific offering tools or download Source SDK and setting it up for the game. In the last video, I edited the pilot model and exported it. Now we have to edit the QC file to compile the model. First off, you should associate QC files to Notepad++. Then you can open up your QC file of the model you want to have replaced. The first thing you should do is to duplicate the model name line and change it. If you want to look at the model in HLMV, you have to change its name or put it into another folder. Otherwise, it will just load the model from the game's pack files. You can just add the folder custom to the very beginning of the line and comment out the other one. Since you want to compile a different model, the body group line has to be changed. There are three different ways of adding a reference SMD mesh to a model. The body, body group and model command. The body command is used for a simple model, best used for props. The body group command is used for compiling a model with multiple body variants. The model command is used for complex models, models with face flexes and eye tracking. This one is mostly used for character models. However, every one of those commands can compile a basic model. I myself prefer the model command. If you want more information about those commands, I added links to the official Valve developer wiki pages of those commands in the description below. The LOD lines you see here will reduce the level of detail of a model when reaching a specific distance. This will improve performance in the game. You can either replace the model itself with one version that has less polygons, or you can tell the game to ignore some bones. Explaining the LOD system could take its own tutorial, so I'll just remove them for now. I will add a link to this wiki page too if you're interested. Now what follows are several QC commands that specify the nature of a model. When replacing a model, you should not touch these. The only ones you could edit without causing consistency errors are the surface prop settings and the opaque line. The surface prop setting defines what material the model is, like wood, flesh, metal, glass and so on. The opaque line is here for sorting translucent and opaque parts of the model. If a model has many translucent parts, the sorting can mess up. If that happens, some translucent textures can appear on top of or in front of other translucent textures, despite that not being the case. I go the safe way and always compile with mostly opaque. People who will make a risk enough you mod will kiss you for that.
Since we have a new model, we also have to change the CD materials line. This line tells the game where the VMT files of a model are stored. The VMT files will then tell the game which textures are being used and how to render them. You can use this line multiple times, specifying various folders where textures for this model are. Since the model I am compiling already was in the source engine, I simply have to copy the CD materials line from that model into this QC file. The next step in this QC file are the animation lines. The following lines tell the game what animation the model has. They can range from simple animations up to very complex ones which can cue sounds and particles. But you have to know that decompiled animations are sometimes messed up. Some models, including this pilot model, have blended animations. Those animations consist of several smaller ones blended into one single animation. When decompiling, Crowbar cannot unblend those animations. It will give you the finished, blended animation. And because of that, recompiling with the original animation files is not possible most of the times. But there's a cheap way around this issue. There is a QC command called include model. You may think that this command will mix another model into yours. But that's not the case. It actually tells the game to use the animations from another model on yours. If you ask me, they should have called the command copy anims or borrow anims, but that's just my opinion. You'll see why later. To set this up, you will require a second MDL file. That MDL file is an altered version of the model you decompiled. You have to change its name along with the name line inside of it. You can change the name inside the MDL file with Notepad++ in hex mode. It's best to rename the model to something nobody else would use. You could add your own name in there if you want. Then in the QC file you'll have to write down include model followed by the path and name of the file, just like the model name line. As soon as you edit the include model line, you can delete every other animation or sequence line. When you release your mod or model to the public, you will have to add that include model file too. Since it doesn't actually include the animations, it just borrows them from an existing file. If that file does not exist, your model won't have anything to get the animations from. And exactly that is why they should have not called it include model.
now that the animation part is done, we can move on. The next and last thing in my QC file are the iKey chain lines. Those are only used on character models and required to make the feet touch uneven ground. Do not alter or delete those lines. Okay, the QC file is now changed. Save it for now. We will continue with the next step. I would recommend you to add a new content folder to your game. You can edit the game info txt to add a folder name to the list. Then create a folder with said name and copy paste that game info file into that new folder. I will be compiling this model for Left 4 Dead 2. So you go to the Left 4 Dead 2 folder, search the game info txt file. This is the game info txt file. When you scroll down, you can see the search paths. These are the folders the game is using right now. You can just copy one and rename it. Now you can copy this game info txt file, go back to the main folders. You can now create a folder with the name you just selected and paste the game info file into that folder. When you want to play the game, you should then change the name of the folder again because then the game cannot recognize the folder and will ignore the content of it. Many people don't do this. They will test their modding game and see that nothing is wrong with it. But I don't think about the fact that the game is reading the files from this folder and the people who download the mods don't have that folder and the files, so they will have broken mods. Now you can open Crowbar to compile the model. But first you'll have to add a new game directory so it compiles to the model you just created. You unselect the output folder menu. That menu would compile a model to a specified folder, like the desktop. But you want the model to compile straight into the game files. For the compile options, you can just use the default settings. You can now drag and drop your QC files onto Crowbar. After all this setting up and prepping, you can now click the Compile button. This will compile your SMD file into a MDL, VTX, VVD and possibly a PHY file. You can click the Go To button to jump to your model. But we are not done yet. The game now has a model but no textures for it. Since I am porting a model from Gary's mod, I can just copy the original material folder into my mod folder.
there's still something we'll have to do. Remember that include model file? We now have to add that file to wherever we specified its location in the QC file. I selected the same folder as the MDL file, so I'll just paste it there. Now the game has a new model with textures and a model to rip the animations from. I can now open HLMV and look at my model. The model looks okay. It has no texture issues and animates correctly. I can now use this model in my game. Or can I? I cannot use this model. Remember the model name line change we did earlier? We set this model up to compile to a different folder. That folder construct is saved in the model file. Just copying that model file and using it as a mod will end up with an invisible model. So you now have to comment out the custom model name line and enable the original line again. Then you recompile the model and use the new correct compiled files in your mod. I'm not going to show you how you make an add-on file in this video. That is a tutorial on its own. I will just jump into the game, load up a map with the model and see how it works. I am now inside Tamterra, the ultimate mod testing and reviewing area. It's map that I made for this very reason. I added the helicopter pilot model to this map. Otherwise, I had to load a finale map and wait until the helicopter arrives for me to look at the model. The model itself looks pretty okay. It also animates properly. And it has no missing textures. That's about everything you need to know about compiling models. I hope this tutorial provided itself useful for you. I'd also like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, to keep up to date with my tutorials or mods. Mr. Funreel signing out.